This video is going to teach you how to initialize the Kotlin's FMS 4200 found on the CRJ 700. It's going to include everything from initialization up until loading a flight plan. When you first power the FMS, the FMS loads to the status page. Status actually has two pages. This is page one of two as represented in the upper right hand corner of the CDU. You can change between pages by pressing the previous page or next page function keys. When we first start initialization, we're looking at page one here. We want to check that the active database is current. The nav database in this airplane is only good for 28 days. As you can see from this example, the active database is not current because the dates are represented in amber. The FMS does have a secondary database that we could swap with the active database in order to get current information. In order to do that, we need to line select next to the secondary database. So we press L3, and that's going to pull the secondary database into the scratch pad. From there, we would line select L2, and that puts the secondary database into the active database. As you can see from the Example here, the secondary database is not current as well. On page one, we check two other items. We check that the date and time is accurate. We also need to verify the date and time are accurate with a second FMS if our airplane is equipped with dual FMS. Dual FMS database date and time must be checked on both FMS CDUs. Active databases on both FMS units must be identical. If they do not match, the FMS units will not operate in sync mode. From here, we're going to press next page and go to page two of two. On status page two, we're going to check four items. We're going to check the model, the variant, the max takeoff weight, and the engines match our release. Here you can see that the model is Canada Regional Jet. The variant is CRJ 700. The max takeoff weight is 72,750 pounds, and the engine are GE CF34 8C1. From here, we go back to the main index page. You can do this a couple of ways. You can press the index line select key, L6, or you can press the index function key. From index, we're going to position initialization. So you could press R6 and go straight to position initialization or pause and knit. If you pressed index, that sends you to index one of one. We're working down the left hand side from top to bottom. We've already completed status, so now we're going to go to pause and knit by selecting L2. Pause and knit has two pages. This is page one of two. When we first powered the FMS, we get a message on the CDU saying check position. We also see this message on the multi-function display FMS map page. It's basically telling us that we need to set the position of the FMS. We need to tell the FMS where it's located. When we look on page one, we're given two lat long coordinates. We're given where the FMS thinks it is. We're also given an airport lat long coordinates. These may or may not be accurate. To get the most accurate, we need to go to next page. From next page, we're now on page two of two. We can line select either GPS one or GPS two into the scratch pad. This airplane has dual GPS. Once we line select those into the scratch pad, now we go back to previous page, back to pause and page one of two, and the GPS one position stayed in the scratch pad. From there, we're going to line select R5 and actually set the position. Once we do this, then the GPS position goes into set position and both messages on the CDU and the multifunction display disappeared. I caution you to check that position with the lat coordinates on the gate from your airport diagram. From pause and knit, we go back to index. Here on index, we go below pause and knit and we go to VOR control. On VOR control, we want to make sure that the VOR and DME usage is enabled. 
Another thing that we can do on this page is if there was a VOR that was notumed out of service, we could actually put the VOR into the scratch pad and then line select it to inhibit the FMS for looking at that nav aid. After we ensure that the VOR and DME usage is enabled, we go back to index. From VOR control, we go to GPS control. Here on the GPS control page, we want to verify that GPS1 and GPS2 are enabled. Again, this FMS has dual GPS. A couple of other things that we could do on this page is if there was a satellite notumed out of service, we could actually deselect the satellite from being viewed by the FMS. And we can check for rain at our destination at our estimated time of arrival. Once we verify that GPS 1 and GPS 2 are enabled, we go back to index. From GPS control, we go to FMS control. Here we want to make sure that the display mode is in mag and the FMS coordinate mode is in sync. Sync is required when two operable FMS units are installed. After we verify these two items, we go back to index. So now we have completed all the line items on the left-hand side of index one of one. From here, we're basically going to do a U-shape flow from index to radio to MFD menu to performance and then finishing up at the flight plan page. After index, we go to radio. This sends us to radio tuning one of one. Here we're going to put nav one and nav two to the auto mode. You can line select L4 and R4 and doing so puts nav one and nav two into auto. This allows us to place the station identifier into an active channel and then it automatically sets the frequency from the database. From radio we go to MFD menu multi-function display. This sends us to the right display menu, one of two. This basically sets up your multi-function display to allow for pre-selected and customized views on the MFD. There are some defaults that uh, each pilot will get from the MFD menu. You want to line select next to speed, altitude, missed approach on the right side, this is uh, an example of setting up the first officer's multifunction display. And we also want to assume that the first officer is the pilot flying in this example. Because the first officer is the pilot flying, then on the window, line item L6, we want to select VNAV. That is vertical navigation. Once you select those items, then you see that speed, altitude, missed approach, and VNAV on the right side, the first officer side, are now green. This finishes up page one of two. Now we need to go to page two. On right display menu two of two, the other default item is range to altitude. You line select L1, and that also makes it green. This now allows the multi-function display to place a magenta arc to show where your top of climb and bottom of descent are located. Once the pilot has finished this, if you locate the multi-function display and place it into the FMS map page, you can now see that the top item below the UTC, the true airspeed glide slope, the uh, temperatures, we now have several waypoints. We have the cyan from waypoint, we have the magenta two waypoint, and we have the next two waypoints in white. Then we have colons that separate the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So when the pilot flying, or the first officer in this case, as the pilot flying in the VNAV mode on the right side of those colons, they're going to get advisory vertical navigation information. For the pilot not flying, or the captain in this case, when you look at the lower right-hand corner of the CDU, you see that the side is set to left. The pilot not flying window goes to the on position. 
Now you can see a slight difference on the MFD. The pilot not flying in the on position gets all the same waypoints as the pilot flying, but in the lower right hand corner after those colons, we get what the fuel over destination will be. We also verify that the right side and left side on page two of two is still selected to range to altitude. From here we go to performance. On performance, we get to our performance menu. We do a couple of things here. First, we enable our advisory VNAV. So you line select L5, and this now puts enable in green. This now enables advisory vertical navigation information on the multifunction display. From here, we go to fuel management. So you line select R1. This sends us to the fuel management one of three. Here we are just verifying that the performance mode is in the predicted mode. If it's in measured, then you can line select L5 and it will change to predicted. This is the most accurate representation of all phases of flight for fuel performance measurements. After we verify that the performance mode is in predicted, we land and finish on the flight plan page. Now we're ready to load a flight plan.